My hair loss used to be really bad. You could see my scalp. I completely lost my beautiful, thick, long hair. Today, my hair is so much better. My scalp is less noticeable and the quality of my hair has really improved. In this video, I'm gonna be updating my hair growth journey, but stick around to the end to learn all of my secrets that have helped me combat hair loss and regrow my hair. Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Iman. On this channel, we talk about scientifically backed methods to help combat hair loss without any of the harsh chemicals. Stick around to the end because I'll be updating my exact methods that I've been using on how I have improved my hair. I actually started my YouTube channel about a year and a half ago and the first or one of the first or second video that I did was my hair loss journey, talking about my hair loss and how I improved it. I was actually blown away by how many views it got. Like at the moment, I think it's around 350,000 views. The one thing that struck me was the fact that there are so many women as well as men that are suffering the same thing as me and that made me feel like comfort that I wasn't alone in this so this video is an update from that video if you want to watch that video I'll link it in the description but I was so amazed by all of your comments and how even today that my channel is really helping so many women that are suffering from the same thing so the first question that I'm gonna answer today what type of hair loss do I have this question is so important and you really need to understand the answer before you go ahead and find all of the different solutions that are going to help you combat hair loss. My hair loss is androgenetic alopecia, which is triggered by polycystic ovary syndrome. I also have iron deficiency as well. Now, my hair loss is hereditary, but it was triggered by polycystic ovaries. What is polycystic ovary syndrome? Polycystic ovaries contain a large amount of harmless follicles, about eight millimeters in size. The follicles are undeveloped sacs, which are unable to release an egg. This means that ovulation does not take place. It's really difficult to know how many women have PCOS, but it, apparently it's super common and about one in 10 women have PCOS. The symptoms include hair loss, but also the reverse, which is hirotism. I can't ever pronounce that, which is facial hair and hair all over the body, which is quite surprising that they're so different and they're the reverse of each other, but hair loss is a main factor of PCOS as well. One of the things that I found was when I first got diagnosed, my doctor didn't let me know that hair loss was a cause of it. And it was only later down the line that this was something that I found out and I wish I'd known this earlier because it's really important if you do have PCOS to understand that that's what's causing your hair loss to be able to choose the right treatment. Now another thing that PCOS causes is high levels of unbalanced hormones and this is one of the reasons why hair loss can occur is if you have increased testosterone levels and testosterone is a key player in why hair loss happens especially also in female or male patterns baldness, which is what I have. Androgenetic alopecia is thinning across the whole scalp. So I had miniaturization where I didn't have excessive shedding, but the hair got thinner and thinner and you were able to see the scalp more as well as the quality of the hair decrease. So that's one of the reasons why understanding whether you have telogen effluvium or whether you have androgenetic alopecia, your doctor to diagnose you in terms of what type of hair loss is going to be so important. Following from this, it's really important to test everything to make sure you're ruling out anything like like your thyroid, like a vitamin deficiency, like iron and vitamin D, as well as getting tested to see if you have PCOS. Once you know, it's gonna be much easier to implement the plan of action. That's why I'm super excited to bring you today's sponsor, which is Let's Get Checked. Let's Get Checked makes professional testing easier without actually having to see a health practitioner. Let's Get Checked makes professional health testing easier so that you don't have to go all the way to the doctor's office to get checked. You can easily test to see if you have PCOS by choosing the test online. It will be delivered to you in discreet packaging right to your doorstep with the next day delivery. Once your sample arrives in the laboratory, you'll get your result within two to five days, which is a great turnaround. I live in London. The NHS, which is the National Health Service, can be so long to firstly get the test and then get the result. So this is great. Once your results are available, these results will be reviewed by a physician and a nurse will contact you to organize online consultation. Sometimes the physician will also be able to provide a prescription to the pharmacy of your choice. Let's Get Checked Laboratories are CLIA approved and CAP accredited. These are the highest accreditations that a laboratory can get. Let's Get Checked lets you test in the comfort of your own home without having to wait in line or go to the doctor's office by providing you with access to testing that is so important into understanding your hair loss and generally your health as well. Everyone should take an active involvement in understanding 
understanding their health and wellness. It's never been this easy to get tested at home. If you want to get tested at home, visit the link that's on the screen right now. Use my code EMEN30 for 30% discount. For anyone who is battling with hair loss, I really recommend checking your thyroid, your hormones, your PCOS, and also your iron as well to ensure that you're ruling out any of these causes of hair loss. Now let's talk about everything that I do to help combat my hair loss. I also want to point out that I'm not a medical practitioner and this is just what's worked for me and it might not necessarily work for you but I want to bring my journey so that maybe it will help someone. Now for polycystic ovary syndrome it is causing my testosterone levels to be super high. Now testosterone is a key hormone that influences hair loss. It, an enzyme converts it D to DHT which binds to the hair follicle miniaturizing the hair and restricting the blood supply. Now blood supply is really important and the way that you want to help regrow hair is increasing your blood flow. My high levels of testosterone means that I need to take supplements that will lower my testosterone levels to help me create a more balanced environment for hair to grow. The ways that I do that is licorice root. I take organic licorice root supplement and just to know everything will be linked in the description. Licorice root has been shown in clinical studies to really lower levels of testosterone both in men and women and that's why I take it. Additionally I also take saw palmetto which helps to block DHT at the root. Now my iron deficiency, when I got checked out for my iron my ferritin levels were subpar below 30 which is so bad. We need ferritin levels of 70 and above. Anything below that is going to affect the quality and the rate of growth of your hair. What's crazy is that ferritin is actually stored in the hair follicle so when you have a deficiency the first thing that your body's going to do is pull it from a non-vital organ like your hair. Your heart pumps blood, your lungs are so that you can breathe. These are vital organs. Your hair is basically dead. It's not vital. If anything you could shave your head and you'd be fine and be able to survive. That's why your body takes it from hair and it's actually one of the leading causes of female hair loss. Women are more susceptible to this because they have periods. Some women have heavier periods and that's going to deplete your iron stores. I take Solgar which is a more gentler version of iron because iron can be quite difficult to absorb but I do this by taking vitamin C, having it with a glass of orange juice. This helps to increase the absorption of iron. Additionally you can also eat more red meat. It's easier for your body to absorb heme iron which is from animal products than non-heme iron which is from plants and leaves. So that's something to note. Now the great thing about let's get checked is it allows you to check often as possible and when you're basically correcting a deficiency or testing out your hormones you want to get checked every three months to see what you're doing is actually working so that you can then increase your dosage or change your diet in some way to be able to see how your body is faring based on the treatments that you're doing. So I would definitely recommend if you do find that you do have any of these issues is to make sure to get checked every three months. So the next thing that is so important is blood flow. If you learn anything from this video understand that blood flow is the key to stopping hair loss and growing hair. Now the reason why blood flow is so important is your hair follicles are connected to the blood supply. There's two components to this. One that the hair follicle is getting enough blood flow so there isn't any restrictions to the blood flow and two the blood flow that it, it's getting contains all of the nutrients and building blocks that your hair needs to grow. So we're gonna look at this in twofold. We're gonna look at stimulating blood flow but then also improving the blood flow that the hair gets. Now the first way that has really helped me and has helped me with my hair loss is derma rollering. Now derma rollering is a micro needling device. I use a 1.5 millimeter stainless steel derma roller. Again everything linked in description. I use this once a week and sometimes I use the derma pen which is a little bit more easier to use. The way that the derma roller works is that the small incisions that it makes in your scalp it creates wounds then stimulates blood flow so that your body rushes blood to that area to heal it. This in turn helps to regrow hair. It also increases collagen production which also helps to stimulate hair growth. There is science to back this up and everything that I talk about on this channel and also in this video is backed by science. The studies done on derma rollering shows a really positive outcome on hair growth and hair loss specifically for androgenetic alopecia but it also helps in all forms of hair loss because of the mechanism of stimulating blood flow. If you want to know my exact method I really recommend you watching this video is my derma roller video because it shows you exactly how to use the derma roller and how to use it on your scalp. Now next is a hair oil. Now not just any oil and I'm not going to 
gonna say castor oil. I've done a video on castor oil. It's, you know, anecdotally, but I'm talking about an oil that has been shown in studies to stimulate hair growth. Now that oil is rosemary essential oil. Rosemary essential oil has been shown in clinical studies to stimulate hair growth. And there's a lot of evidence to show that it helps to stimulate hair growth. Now you wanna use rosemary essential oil with a carrier oil like jojoba or almond oil. This helps to dilute the rosemary essential oil. You do not wanna put it on straight, otherwise you're gonna have an allergic reaction. Now I'm actually launching my own hair growth oil, which is a proprietary blend of organic cold pressed oils. And if you want to get your hands on a bottle, make sure to sign up in the link in the description. Now this oil has really helped me. I would definitely recommend using it in conjunction with derm rollering. And if you wanted to increase the absorption is to get yourself a 0.5 millimeter derm roller and use this a few times a week to help the absorption of the oil that you're using. Next is scalp massages. Scalp massages have also been shown in clinical studies to help stimulate hair growth. And the mechanism also is to do with blood flow, increasing blood flow, but also scalp tension. Now as we grow, our skull expands and the tension between our scalp gets more tense, which then restricts the blood flow. So it's about decreasing the tension in the scalp. That feels good and making it more energized. So I would recommend watching my scalp massage video. I show you exactly the technique that was shown in these studies. So I've read the research papers for you guys. You don't need to do it. It saves you a lot of time and you can do the massages, but you do need to do the massages every day for at least 10 to 20 minutes to see any results. Now, one thing to note with everything that I've just mentioned, which I should have said at the start, is that it takes about six months to see any real results from any treatment that you're doing with respect to hair loss or hair growth. So if you're not seeing anything after three months, do not despair, don't give up. The really important thing is to stay consistent and continuously do it. It takes time, but you have to be patient. The other thing that I also use is red light therapy. So I use this as a supplement treatment. It's not gonna be the main treatment. If you don't have the, the budget for it, then I wouldn't get it. It is been also shown to help stimulate hair growth and that's something that I use just to boost the treatments that I'm doing already. There's a PRP treatment that you get on your skin. It's included with microneedling and then a red light therapy mask. So I'm just mimicking that and doing that on my scalp. Then the other important thing, again, as I mentioned, you wanna increase the nutrients and the vitamins that your hair needs to help it grow, to help stimulate it. And that's why I also eat a lot of protein. Amino acids in protein are the building blocks of hair and that helps to increase keratin production, helps to increase the quality of your hair. But you wanna be making sure that you're eating at least one gram to every kilogram of weight. So eating a lot of protein, nuts, uh, food products, beans, that's really important as well. I also like to make myself a berry and green leafy vegetable smoothie. To have all of those nutrients every single day is really important, but you can also increase efficacy of this by taking a niacin supplement. When you take a niacin supplement, it opens up your capillaries, which then your body floods blood to the area all around your body and helps to just stimulate um, blood flow. So niacin plus smoothie in the morning is really, really good to help also stimulate hair growth. Now lastly, but not least, is I use Waterman shampoo. The shampoo isn't gonna change my hair, but having a shampoo that's dedicated to hair loss, that has rosemary in it, which is what Waterman's has, is really, is really gonna be beneficial. If not, you can just add rosemary essential oil to the shampoo that you have already, but make sure it's a sulfate-free shampoo. If you guys are interested in learning more about hair loss and all things derma rollering, scalp massages, oils, make sure to check out this playlist which is right here. Don't forget to get checked and use my code EMEN30 for 30% off all the different uh, health tests that you can do at the comfort of your own home. Thank you so much for watching. See you later. Bye!